guys, in today's video, I'm going to tell you about three signs that told me that my little baby was sick. Now, when they're little like this, the signs are different than when they're weaned. So I'm also gonna give you some, a couple of signs you can look for when they're not such small babies. I'm Kaylin, the author of The Prayer Plus Bond and the new book, Get to Know, African Grey and Kate Parrott, both available on Amazon, a great companion for your new baby parrot or a great gift if you know someone who's getting a parrot. Um, I have over 20 species of parrots. This one's a little loud and this one's species is a mystery. If you're used to hanging out, you know that a part of my mission is to help you increase your bond, reducing the need for rescues or at least allevi alleviating them some. Let's get started. got her, she cried nonstop. Also, her crop right there, you see that bull? I just fed her. Her crop is where food goes in. Now, she's cute and adorable, but I'm gonna put her back. Okay, I put her back in, in uh, hopes that you could hear me. Um, people's crop wasn't going down. Think of them sort of as a kangaroo, but instead of where they put their joeys, that sack right there, it's not accessible outside, it's in them, but that's where they hold their food so that their parents can go and look for food and they give them plenty of food and they hold it in their crop and then it slowly digests. Well, Beepa's wasn't digesting. So the, there were definitely some signs that she was ill and fortunately I was able to get into the vet in time she seems to be doing better. Better. <laughs> How do I know that she's doing better? Number one, she's digesting her food. Number two, at this age, she's gaining weight every day, which she should be. I'm weighing her every day using a gram scale and every day she's gaining a couple of grams. That's really good. We're really going in the right direction. She's still on an antibiotic. The third thing is at one point she got really quiet. She was hardly making any sound. And when she did, it was like just a little as teeny as whimper. And you heard her now, her voice has come back and that tells me that she's doing better. She's also looking around, kind of seeing the world in a way for the first time, now that she's not half unconscious because she was so ill. Now, like I had said, it's different with a baby parrot and hopefully you're not bringing home a baby parrot like that. It's not easy to take care of them successfully. Just to give you an example, you have to know when to feed them. You have to know what to feed them. You know how, have to know how often to feed them. You have to know what temperature to keep them at, how to keep them warm. You know, there's just a lot to it to make sure that the baby carrot actually uh, thrives and grows up kind of thing. So again, hopefully you're not really bringing a baby parrot home unless you really have that experience and you've already done plenty of hand feeding. Now, uh, hopefully if you might be bringing a young parrot home or a new parrot home. And in that case, you know, or you maybe already have a parrot. In that case, what are some signs to look for? What are some signs to look for? To, um, that are gonna tell you if your parrot is sick? That's a really popular and important question. I'm gonna try to give you an example with Blue. Blue is, you know how you go to the doctor and they're like, look at my eyes. You can kind of do the same with your parrot. Blue's engaging, I do. He's following my hand, he's aware. He's active. Let's see, come here Blue, come here. If I pick blue up, I can, with my thumb right here, 
feel his heel bone and it feels okay. Blue's a little thin. I'd like to see Blue get just a little, gain a little bit of weight, but he's not, not bad at all. The heel bone, when you touch right there, if you can touch that bone on your parrot, it's gonna tell you, if you can't feel the bone, your parrot's too fat, if you're looking in the right place. If it feels kinda even with the skin, with the muscle, it's perfect. And on the other hand, if from the bone, it goes, you know, instead of being kind of flat or roundish with the flesh, it kind of goes like a V, your parrot is thin. One of the hardest things is that, I'm sure you've heard, parrots hide their illness. When they hide their illness, they're not necessarily gonna hang out the way Blue is with me. They might get kind of sleepy. They might go to a different side of their cage that's a little more private. And even though they look fine, they kind of hunker down and they kind of get quieter. They still look normal, like they, they fluff up their feathers. So the looks are meant to be deceiving and they are. You have to kind of watch and really monitor that heel bone or if you weigh your parrot on a regular basis, which like every um, one of my experts recommends weighing them like once a week, once every two weeks, then that's gonna very quickly clue you in if there's a significant weight loss. And what's a significant weight loss sort of seems like, it depends on who you ask. But for me, I actually go with the keel bone, it tells me a little more, but if they're losing like, if they're starting to lose 5% of their weight, up to 10% of their weight, I start to kind of go, uh, I don't know if that's good. Now, one thing about that is if you weigh them first thing in the morning before they eat, just like you, their weight's a little less than certainly after they eat or later in the day when they have eaten. So you kind of have to also make sure that you're monitoring by weighing around the same time of the day. So really look for those things. Now, one surefire sign for us is the parrots start to look, um, you know, I, I hate to say it, but either a little drugged or a little drunk, like, like they're, they, you know, they're just like, you know, they're not quite fully in tune with their eyes. The, you know, parrots, these birds, if something flies by, they're like looking for it and they look out of the side of their eye to try to look to see what's going on and they catch, you know, any little movement. And when they're sick, they're not sharp like that. They're not keen, their senses aren't keen. So when your parrot isn't eating and when your parrot is looking kind of drunk or something, like they're just, their awareness isn't keen. And instead they're kind of subtle. They're sleeping more. They're on a uh, perch in their cage maybe, or maybe somewhere in your home, but they're kind of in this quiet, the, the most quiet, most comfortable, most um, protected place, and they're kind of resting. Those are some signs. Now, if your parrot is starting to rest at the bottom of their cage, make an appointment for an avian vet immediately. By the time they're at the bottom of the cage, oftentimes, um, it's gotten more serious. If you want your parrot to survive, chances are you really have to get them into the vet as soon as possible. What can you do if you know your parrot is sick? Well, that's kind of tough and it kind of depends on what your resources are. So one of the things you can do is you can try to keep some electrolytes on hand and you can always give your parrot some electrolytes to drink like maybe in their water, or maybe you give them a dropper and maybe they'll take some for you. I don't know, you know, how, what kind of relationship you're gonna have with your parrot. It depends on the parrot, it depends on how old they are, it depends on all sorts of things. So if you can get some electrolytes in them, it increases the fluids and it gives them a little jolt of something, um, the electrolytes, and that, I've really seen a difference with that. That does seem to help my birds. It is a Band-Aid. It is a completely temporary Band-Aid. It is something that'll maybe help you um, get them to the appointment in a couple of hours, maybe get them to the appointment tomorrow. It is not even a short-term thing. It's a mini thing. Um, you can also try to have some baby parrot food on hand. They do have expiration dates, just like everything else. 
So if you get a small amount to keep on hand as an emergency, you may want to keep it tucked away in your refrigerator to keep its freshness. But the baby parrot formula, you would use just to try to hand feed them, like if your parrot will take some off your finger or with a little spoon or something. In case they're not eating, maybe they'll eat. If you feed them, maybe not. You know, that's, again, it sort of depends. Sometimes it depends on how sick they are, what they have, those kinds of things affect it. Um, when, when one of my parrots is sick, if I need to, because I have bread and because I know how to hand feed baby parrots, I will intubate my parrot if I need to. Uh, even if they're not a baby, if they're sick and I need to, I will. That means that I can get a tube and put it in their beak and down their throat. And I can force in that way, force feed them some baby parrot food. I feed, I give them electrolytes. Um, you know, depending on what's going on, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Is there anything else we do when you guys seem sick? No? Maybe that's about it. Um, oh, of course, when you have a parrot that looks like they're not feeling well, that kind of thing, you can create a temporary parrot hospital. A parrot hospital is a box or a bin that you put some bedding in, maybe some newspaper, maybe a dowel, like if you can rig that up. Um, if you have like a thicker piece of wood that won't roll, you can always just put wood at the bottom because it's all perch on it. Uh, and it's something that you try to somehow or another give heat to. Maybe you bring a little heated pad under half of it, not all of it, half of it so that they can choose to go to the warmer side or if they're too hot, they can choose to go to the cooler side. Um, and it's something that if you cover it, you make sure that your parent hospital, like for example, as a bin, has holes in it. Or if it's a box, you've punched really good holes in it with a bin, uh, what people in the parrot world do is they'll use a drill with, with a good size hole. Not, not just like the poke of a ice pick kind of thing, but like a good size hole so that there's air circulation and they're getting plenty of fresh air as well. So those are some of the things that you can try. Um, I find that the best thing is of course preventative, just preventative uh, habits. And those really start with a really good diet, making sure they have clean water every day, making sure they have a really clean cage. And within my really good diet, I make sure my parrots, I give them hemp oil and hemp oil is a combination, or sorry, hemp oil has the combination of omega threes and sixes in perfect balance. It is something I've seen a lot of experts use. And so um, I like it and it, it's just something that I'll sprinkle on their veggies. It's not meant to be a lot. It's just something that is definitely beneficial for them. Sometimes I use my teeth must have CBD oil, which right now we're ordering, I ran out, so it's coming. But um, the CBD really helps support a strong immune system. So it isn't a cure if your parrot is sick, but if your parrot's healthy, it is a great way to make sure that they stay that way. And so, once a week or twice a week, you know, I kind of go by the feel of things. I do my very best and I kind of look at my parents and I look at the time of year and I'm like, here's what I think they need now. Here's what I think they need now. So, you know, for example, if I do sprouts, uh, seed, sprouts some seeds, I'm not really going to put oil on those. And so some of it is sort of seasonal. Some of it depends on what I'm feeding them, that kind of thing. But those are the things that I do to ensure that my parrot doesn't get sick. And when my parrots do get sick, because sometimes that's just the way it is. Um, Peepa, by the way, in case you didn't watch my previous videos where I talked about, about getting her, um, she came to me sick. So I have had to try to work her health in and thank goodness for avian veterinarians. So make sure that you create some really good habits for your parrot so that you really promote health in your parrot and then recognize those signs. When your parrot, uh, one of my favorite things to say is when your parrot isn't their usual genki self, something's wrong. So their genki self, genki is a Japanese word and I kind of think of it as being like a monkey that's all anim animated and they're all over the place. They're happy, they're excited, they're energetic, they're all like that. Now watch your parrot because sometimes they're genki and other times they're just like whatever, I don't know. Sometimes they they aren't on top of their game. 
Um, land shark, if she would come over, I would, I would put her in the picture. But that was her just now, if you heard that. Ah! Land shark! Papa! Oh, she, she's found, I think, some... Oh, my husband brings the Major Mitchell in here and um, gives her pistachios. And I think Landshark has found some shells. Anyway, um, Landshark was kind of being a little moody. She was a little slow yesterday, the day before, but now she's back to her Yankee self. When you get to know your parrot real good, you get to know how they're doing and you know when they're off at all. I know you want pets, but you keep getting coming after my earrings. Stop, stop. All right. Now, ever so quickly, um, we recently opened our new merch shop. That's one of my daughter's designs. She is, Shalha is this incredible high schooler artist and she's doing designs and we're putting, turning them into merch. Got some really cute things for, ideas for you for Christmas. There's her bag. That's a little Linny. Uh, so make sure that you visit shop.parrotbliss.com to get your awesome Christmas merch. Make sure you give me one of these in the video. Comment below if you have any questions or comments because that always helps my juice. So I really, really appreciate it. And then I'll catch you in the next feathered video.